Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to sew this outfit. In my previous video, I showed you how to make the pattern for this outfit. So be sure to check that video out first before watching this video. The initial sketch of this top had two drawstrings below the bust. However, while making it, I tried it on and I looked like a stuffed animal. So I had to go back to the drawing board and decide on whether I wanted to scrap the project or find a solution. I ended up going with finding a solution and took off the drawstring just below the bust. And I liked the end result. So the top now looks more of like the original design. However, mine is longer and I also have buttons and loops at the back to close it off. In the intro of my pattern making video, I mentioned that I was quite worried about my fabric combination. However, I think it worked. I actually really like the combination. Okay then, enough of me talking. Let's get started already. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any single thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and what you think about the fabric combination. And also, give this video a like. Tell your friends to give this video a like too if you want to see more of these videos from me. My name is Ijama and welcome to my sewing diary. The materials you will need are your manipulated patterns, fabric scissors, big buttons for the skirt, I use a total of 5 buttons, pins, interface, measuring tape, fabric for the skirt and top, I used about 1.5 yards for each in some leftover fabric I had laying around, matching and basting thread, needle, loops for the back of the top, small buttons for the back of the top, tailor's chalk, razor blade, safety pin and bias tape. Now you can use a store-bought bias tape but I'll be making mine out of the top fabric for Synergy. I'll leave the full list in the description box below as well as all associated links. I'll be starting with the skirt, so cut your fabric according to the instructions on your pattern. Note that you will be cutting the facings on the opposite side of its corresponding front side. So if your slit on the front middle part is cut by placing your pattern on the right side of the fabric, you'll be cutting the corresponding facing by placing the pattern on the wrong side of the fabric. Your facings and top skirt pieces should be cut on the main fabric and interface. For the top skirt pieces, you will only need to cut one piece of interface each. Mark notches when you're done. On the front pieces, I'm placing right side on right side, connect the side without a slit, in my case this is the right hand side, to its corresponding side on the front middle piece with pins. And then also connect the side back pieces to the back middle piece by placing right side on right side with pins. When you're done, connect your pin back pieces to the sides of your front patterns. Again, placing right side on right side. So I pinned all at once so that I'll be running the entire bottom skirt through my sewing machine at the same time. Stitch all pinned areas with a half inch seam allowance and press open afterwards. Pin your interface to your facing pieces and press down to stick with your steam iron. And then, placing right side on right side, Pin your facings to the corresponding front pieces at the front open edge and sew all pinned areas with a half inch seam allowance. After sewing, trim the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch and understitch by sewing the seam allowance to the facing. Press down when you're done and now it's time for the top part of the skirt. Pin the interface to the corresponding top skirt pieces and press down with your iron to stick. Now you will only need to press to one set of top pieces. When you're done, pin the sides of the front to the sides of the back 
and stitch with a half inch seam allowance. It will look like both pieces are opposite, that's fine, it's supposed to look this way. In this clip, I had redone one of the pieces over and over again because I thought it looked wrong. I eventually got it right at a later stage, so the clip includes some progress we are yet to get to. Now this is one of the good things I love about my diary entries. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. When you're done, trim your seam allowance to a quarter of an inch and then on each piece, mark half an inch up from the bottom edge, fold, pin and press down to create fold lines. And then placing right side on right side, pin and sew the top edge together with your half inch seam allowance. Press open the seam allowance and trim to a quarter of an inch. Then matching the corresponding top band piece to the bottom skirt piece and placing right side on right side, pin one side of the top band piece to the bottom skirt piece like so, starting half an inch from one end of the top piece and ending half an inch away from the other end of the top piece. Go ahead and stitch all pinned areas, pressing open when you're done. At the edge of the waistband, where you've left open, with right sides on right sides, pin the edge of the two top pieces and stitch together to seal the top piece. Trim the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch and then it's time to stitch in the ditch. I've done this in two of my videos already, so I'll leave the link and timing in the description box below. But basically what you want to do is pin the back waistband to the front at the seam line in front and stitch inside the seam line in front so that you catch the back waistband and the stitch does not show in front. To hem the skirt, first mark half an inch in from the hem of the skirt and a further one inch from the first mark and as usual, fold over the first mark pin and press and then fold over the second mark, pin and press. Stitch close to the folded edge at the bulk of the skirt with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Mark your button hole placement on the middle extension. I mark my first button half an inch in from the top edge, the next 3 inches from the first and the rest 4 inches away from each other. Transfer the width of your buttons to this side and then go ahead and sew your buttonholes. I've shown you how to sew buttonholes in one of my videos and I'll leave the link in the description box below. When you're done, open the buttonhole with your razor blade or seam ripper and then sew your buttons at the corresponding points on the other side. Clean out your raw edges and you're done with the skirt. Now let's get on with the top. Cut your fabric according to the instructions on your pattern and mark all notches. You'll be cutting the facing only on the main fabric and interface. Also cut three long one and a half inches wide strips of fabric. Placing right side on right side, join the front and back pieces at the side with pins and stitch all pinned areas with a half inch seam allowance pressing open when you're done. We will then work on the top pieces. So starting with the front piece, I'm placing right side on right side, pin both pieces together at the top and side. Also do the same for the back pieces, so that at the end you will have three pieces, one front piece and two back pieces. Stitch all pinned areas with a half inch seam allowance trimming your stitch seam allowance to a quarter of an inch and pressing afterwards. Set these aside when you're done. And let's prepare the bias using scrap of fabric. I learned how to make bias from Made Every Day here on YouTube and I'll leave her link down below even though I'll be going through the process here. So let's get started. Taking a nice big enough square piece of fabric, I wanted to use the largest length I could so I could get long pieces from it. So I ended up using a 20 by 23 inch square piece of fabric. 
Go ahead and fold the fabric at a 45 degree angle and that is at the bias like so. Take off the excess fabric at the bottom and split the folded fabric at a 45 degree line such that you now have two triangles. Fold the triangles at the 45 degree line and pivot your folded fabric such that the folded edge is at the bottom and the cut bias edge is at the side. From the bias edge, mark two inch wide lines and cut through the lines like so, so that you now have long bias pieces. You will now need to sew the pieces together so that you have a long continuous bias. I like to use the short ones in between the long ones so that I'm not joining the short pieces together in succession. So you'll be joining the pieces at an angle. So placing right side on right side, you want to join the pieces such that the sharp top triangular edges are at opposite sides like so. So that when you stitch, it will open up to a straight line. Essentially, you are joining the pieces at a 90 degree angle. A neat trick to know that you are joining them properly is that when you join the first two pieces at a 90 degree angle facing left or right, the next piece will be joined at a 90 degree, degree angle in the opposite direction. So I ended up making three separate long pieces. When you're done, stitch all pinned areas with a quarter inch seam allowance and press open afterwards. Trim off the protruding excess. Now it's time for the fun bit, pressing the long bias to create fold lines. I have a bias tape maker, but in all honesty, I personally find it frustrating to use. So I'll be pressing my bias tape the long hard way. If you do not have a bias tape maker, this is for you. So first, fold the bias tape into two and press down with your steam iron to create the first fold line. You need a movie playing at the background, a waist level ironing board or table and a chair because you want to be very comfortable. Once you've created the first fold line, fold each edge to touch the first fold line and press with your steam iron. Afterwards, fold again at the first fold line, this time including the folded edges and give it a final press. And ta-da! you created your bias tape in the same fabric as what you're working with. Congratulations. Set these aside and let's get back to the bodice piece. Using your pattern as a reference, measure the distance between the hem of your bodice and the mark below your waist and transfer this to your actual bodice. At this point, I had not realized I wasn't going to like the first turnout, and that is with drawstrings at the underbust and at the waist. So I also marked the line above this too, and that is at the underbust. You don't need to do that, so please ignore all reference to that line in the next few clips. So assuming this top line is your waistline, starting from one end of the bodice, Go ahead and pin your bias tape flat down till you get to the other end. And then tack this down the middle with contrasting thread so that it stays in place. When you're done, stitch very close to both edges from one end to the other. And then take off your basting stitch. So you have just created a channel that will allow you to gather the bodice. Set this aside when you're done. Prepare your facing by pinning and pressing the interface to the corresponding facing. Then pin your loops half an inch away from the edge of one side of your center back, starting and stopping where you want. The loops should also not cross the channels. I started and ended mine about three inches away from the top and bottom of the center back. I also gave my loops more gap by cutting the loops in between. Afterwards, pin your facing to your center back on both sides, making sure you're catching the stem of the loops where you have pinned the loops. Stitch all pinned areas with a half inch seam allowance from top to bottom, making sure you do not stitch over the channels. I've used horizontal pins to indicate where I will not be stitching. When you're done, 
Press your seam allowance open and trim your seam allowance to a quarter of an inch to reduce bulk. Give it another press for a good finish. Hem the bottom by first marking half an inch in from the hem and a further half inch in from the first mark. Fold twice, pin and press as you've hemmed the skirt. You'll be sewing down at the inner edge with a 1 8 inch seam allowance and pressing when you're done. Next, finish your armhole with bias tape by placing right side on right side. Pin one edge of the bias tape from one end of the armhole to the other. Do this on both sides and then stitch with a half inch seam allowance. When you're done, trim the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch to reduce bulk and then fold over the bias tape and stitch the back of the bias tape to the front at the front part of the bodies and, it, and one eight inches away from the initial stitch line. Give it a good press when you're done. Then attach the top neck piece to the rest of the top by pinning the corresponding parts to the top, placing right side on right side. Sew with a half inch seam allowance, press open, and then trim to a quarter of an inch to reduce bulk. Where the top neck piece connects to the rest of the bodies at the front and back, pin your bias tape flat down such that the middle of the bias tape is at the seam line. You also want to make sure you fold the bias tape at the ends for a good finish. Tack and sew the edges down with a 1 8 inch seam allowance to create channels like you did the ones on the body. Taking your strips of fabric, and with right sides on right sides, fold and press each one into two and stitch down with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then using your safety pin, pin one side of one edge and insert the head of the safety pin into the hole created, using the head of the safety pin to turn the strip inside out like so. Now we'll be inserting these turn strips into the channels created at the waist and neckline. So do it the same way you've just turned the strips and that is by using your safety pin to guide the strips through the channels. The channels are big enough to allow you to do this very smoothly. So it was at this point that I tried the top afterwards, felt I looked a little bit off and then decided to remove the channel just below my underboss. With your centre back together, go ahead and mark where your buttons should be using the loops on one side of the centre back as reference. So you'll be sewing your buttons on the other centre back. Go ahead and sew your buttons with needle and thread. Clean the inside by overlocking all seam allowances. Hi neighbour Taylor with the white overlocker. Thanks for coming to my rescue as usual. And you're done! I love two set pieces, means I can wear them together or mix and match if I feel like. I'll be here next week Friday to show you more fun things to create, so don't forget to subscribe. I also want to hear from you and know how you found the video, so drop me a comment in the comment section too. Until next week, see you later, bye!